Ooh. Marriage made in heaven. About a trap? Ooh. Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. The coroner says it's going to be at least a week to get an ID. Would this one be a collaboration between homicide and traffic then? Because someone me. died here, right? Cases you have unlocked or downloaded can be accessed for replay. No, evidence. we don't need to know that. Oh. Do you need to find some papers or something? Keep talking. Someday you'll say Stephen? something intelligent. Hello? Are you awake today? That's that cop. Seems like a decent guy. I swear. I guess this everyone's kind of somber. Alright. I, I don't want to be rude, but I ain't got time for talking. Um. It's nighttime right now. That's a first. Can you drive? Hey buddy, can you talk to me a little bit? When you don't talk, no. it makes me you drive. It makes me kind of nervous. Go over the case notes. Looks like the DA is going to press charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. What? I'll speak to the DA. She suffered enough. Mm, I don't know, hey. Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let it go. <laughs> How do you do that? I'll give him something better. Oh, but her baby. It's going to be so hard for her to be in prison or whatever. Definitely not a witness. Also not a witness. Detectives! Over here! Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Thick as a white male, name of Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar, name of Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Hmm. Seems like it might be a little bit of a seedy area around here, huh? Oh, LA in general at nighttime might be kind of... Yeah. The guy's hat? Cole's not saying anything, so I feel reluctant to put it down, but I don't... Okay, I'll put it down for now. Phelps? Landed on his face and ended up here. Car must have struck him from behind. Well, we know. We know it's a red car, at the very least. Ugh. It's God. I'm not a coroner, like, I don't feel like there's actually much point in me fiddling with a guy like this. And it feels kind of... not what we should be doing. With the blood and all. California, fire and life. Lester Pattison. Dear Mr. Pattison, It's with great pleasure that we acknowledge the receipt of your application 14F, and pre-approval has been granted to raise a weekly premium on your life- Oh! Whoa, on your life insurance policy from $3.70 per week to $5.90 per week. This raise became effective on January 1st, 1947. Okay, so suddenly, or uh, more like immediately, there's some suspicion of fraud. Life insurance fraud? Where our standard veteran care policy entitled you to a lump sum payout of 10000 in the event of your untimely death or a permanent incapacitation, this new plan secures your benef beneficiaries a sum of 16000 What the fuck? Too low? We at California Fire and Life thank you and wish you good health and security for the future. Patterson has life insurance. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense that he's carrying this around on him, though. 
If you're committing fraud, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want to have that on your body. So it's going to be important to figure out who his family members and beneficiaries are. We can notify next of kin. Another operator? Same as Adrian Black. Huh. Money? Yeah. Uh... Okay. Anything on his arm? Maybe like a ring or something? If he has a ring, then we know he's married. Hmm. If they're in need of money... Well, if it's life insurance fraud, then I guess it can go down two ways. He killed himself. Or... His beneficiaries killed him. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Oh. Right on his chest. Wait, didn't you just say that he was hit in the back? So it stabbed him through to the front? Or did I miss here just now? Ooh, he got dragged all the way over. Body traveled a good 20 feet. It's pretty, pretty rough. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Hmm. He tried to stop. So the driver managed to break before the impact. If you break before the impact, would that make the chest wound worse? I don't know. Uh. Is that it? I feel like that's not it. No, there's still something else here. Right, and I hear the music too. As faint as it is. It might have been the hat? It's all yours, detective. Not yet. I don't see any more things labeled around here though, do I? So what next? Witness statements next. We know we've got the girl as an eyeball, but we should check the bar as well. Might be the hat after all. Eh, there's not that many ways we can twist and turn this though. Oh! Oh! This was completely overlooked! Nobody noticed this! A knife! A bloody knife in the trash can! A knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. But Cole didn't say it's not important, so it's relevant for sure. And he has a- we know he has a chest wound. Ooh, this is really starting to reek of some type of fraud here. Doesn't look like anything. What is that, a needle? Okay, we don't even have to pick up the bottle. Cigarettes? Not sure this means much. Okay. That should be it, right? No! There's still something else here! Okay, well... Wow, this time... Mmm, I can't always rely on the... The little stands on the ground, because other people can miss them too. I think we're probably a little bit too far away now, because I don't even hear the music anymore. What is this? I'll take the bartender, you work the rest of the room. We're in a bar. Shrink to the stars promises mental breakthrough. Courtney! Come in! 
Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Ooh. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. If we can reveal the root of the problem, then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually of benefit to society at large. Sounds like some weird twisted logic here. This guy, is he like experimenting on the people or something? I don't know, he's doing something strange. Lady is here. There's apparently still a clue around here though, so I feel like we shouldn't... We shouldn't quite... Yeah... Stop yet. Should I just try using an intuition point? Yeah, I mean, it probably beats... Walking around the whole time. Oh, look at that! They added a sign to it now. That definitely wasn't there before, was it? Oh. Come on. Throw me a bone here. Oh! Oh, the newspaper counts as well? I guess so. Yeah, there's no music anymore. Okay, fine. Let's go talk to... Um, I guess the lady first. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Eyewitness to hit and run incident, Shannon Perry, 24. Did she come here as an actress or something? Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Yeah, well, I don't, I guess I don't have a reason to doubt that. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. Oh my god. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. We saw it too. <laughs> Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. 3C8. 3C8. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. <laughs> um, I don't think we have information that goes against that. Why are you... Hmm. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. Oh. I'd like to get my picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress and things are pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. The people arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. We will. <laughs> you certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. 
I don't know what the girl was thinking though. Just because she gets her picture in the newspaper, like no director is gonna look in the newspaper and be like, hey, this eyewitness to a hit and run looks really pretty. I'm gonna call her in so that we can use her as an actress. Like how often does that happen? Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, three Charles eight. Cross check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Dark red. Just a moment, Detective. Can't be leaving out details like that, Cole. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks. William Shelton. Looks like we caught a break on this one. Would that be related to the man and the wife arguing? I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. You look like the owner. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. Oh, Mrs. Patterson. Wait, so she was here? Oh, I guess maybe... Oh, okay. They were here, they were arguing, then he walked out in the street, and then he got hit? Aw. Okay. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. Hmm... <laughs> I can't! There's no evidence I can use to be like, Oh, that's not what you actually heard, right? So I feel like it's usually a doubt here. All you heard was the impact. Oh! But what about the argument? Hold on, what did he say? Oh, it was busy in here. So, mm, he might have heard the argument. We can try asking him about it. Why are you lying, Lynch? What are you covering up? What? Is that the best you've got? You expecting me to confess to being the driver? Okay, no, that's, that sounds way too generic. I think we got it wrong. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Esther and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah, Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. So what was she interested in? A witness overheard an argument. <laughs> Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Yeah, nowadays people do it on Facebook. But back in the 1940s, still gotta do it outside in public. <laughs> uh, wait, what did you say? <laughs> That doesn't give me anything to go off of. And like, frankly, like, Cole, I guess he wants more details, but the way they've written it, I guess it's an organic conversation, but it's certainly not very, like, straightforward in terms of what information we're getting here. Okay. Let's check him out then. Oh, he looks like he's a little apprehensive. Even though what he actually said, I don't feel like there's anything to doubt because it's the truth, right? There is nothing like airing dirty laundry in public. Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Oh my god. Leroy. Leroy Sabo. The owner. Okay, I think we got it. We roughly have it, if there's no twists. It's an insurance fraud case, and the wife killed the husband with the bar owner. 
We're making a lot of assumptions here. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Uh, who knows? I just served the drinks. <laughs> Bartenders hear all sorts of things. Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? <laughs> Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Then how can he... Oh, the money. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. What's a love tap? Like... <laughs> God, why am I so bad with this lingo here? It sounds like something perverted, though. Wait, what was I gonna say before he interrupted me? Yes. No money for new bar, but if we kill the husband, we get $16,000. How does that sound? Hey, Stefan. Are we... Are we gonna go grab a car now? I'm at a loss. We've got to track down that Lincoln Phelps. We find the car, and then we nail the driver. But the car... Well, I guess it makes sense that he wouldn't... Is this a police vehicle, by the way? I don't know. Whatever. You drive. You yeah. know the way. You can drive. <laughs> Do we know where we're going? The cafe? Wait, are we at the cafe right now? Yes, we are. Okay, why can we go here? <laughs> um, let's go to... Sheldon or Pattison. So Pattison is the... the wife. Let's go to Sheldon first, because that's the guy who owns the car that hit the guy. The owner didn't commit the hit and run himself, but he probably got someone that he knew to do it. Oh, there it is. 4.50 in the morning? Oh! Oh, I wonder if it affects it that I waited this long because I didn't go to Patterson's place. Whoa! That's the son of a bitch right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelton. Oh my god. Not this again. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Oh! Whoa! I'm sorry! I didn't... Oh, God. Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy out. My car is just not fast enough, you know? You're expecting me to, like, out... Like, beat this guy here? It's kinda... Oh. Lay into his Whoa. wheel arches. Come on. Did you see that lady? She randomly just fell on the street. <laughs> trying to catch up. Kinda hard though. Maybe I, I gotta. He killed someone driving like this. Sorry. We have to just calm down Don't a little let bit. That asshole get away. Mm, we're not. Oh God. We're not getting the momentum right because I'm always in too much of a hurry to hit him too fast. I'm also trying to drive a little bit safer though, which doesn't help in this situation. Come on. Whoa, wh where are you going? Whoa, there's people here! Guy, guy, move, move! Holy! Oh no! Oh no, I hit somebody! He's heading into the station! Go on, get after him! I hit somebody! It's okay, they're not they're not dead. It's Hold fine. It right there, Shelton! Hey, honey, what time to get off this? 
He's right here. Oh. Stop or I will shoot. Whoa. How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Shelton? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. Yes, we should. Okay. You become all hard at the prospect of paperwork, don't you? Is there a landmark here? There's a little photo thing. Oh no! I didn't see what it said earlier fully, but I think it said that because I hit somebody, it's gonna reflect on my... Yeah, I'm wondering why the cafe is not crossed out. Did I miss something there? Should I go back? Because usually when I'm done, it's crossed out, right? Okay, you know what? Hold on. Let's get back out here. Oh. Well, that's not me. <laughs> I'm a little busy right now, sorry. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. I'm just gonna come uh, back here. Where are we going? I wanna see if we missed anything. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so the wife and the man who is probably the bar owner didn't call the hospital. So maybe they didn't plan the thing, but they just didn't help him when he got hurt. That's the guy. Where the heck am I? Here an honest cop. This is not the bar. Oh, there's an oxymoron for you. Wait, this is not Oh, here it is, the bar. Oh, they cleaned up already, though. Hey, there's they already cleaned up. Soap, you know. And the evidence is gone and everything. Hey. Sorry, pal. That's all I got. Even bartenders run out of gossip. Oh. Weird. I don't know why it's like that, then. Hmm. Maybe it's just a bug? Okay, well, whatever. Get us to the... You can drive. Yeah, All now right. there's a circle Go around two. it. Well, whatever. Get me to their house. Get this morning's edition hot off the press! Do you believe him? I believe he didn't mow down the victim on purpose. The rest of it stinks. His boo-hoo story about being a surveyor and not wanting to lose his license. Well, we'll see how he enjoys surveying the same tiny room for the next 10 years of his life. You make a mistake, you face the consequences. You don't run off and hide like some little girl hoping it'll all go away. People make bad decisions in the heat of the moment. Well, I'd like to see him try that one on the judge. If he had time to clock who was at the scene, he had time to make a choice. So we have the guy who did it. We already know it's him. But we don't exactly know how the thing went down yet. There might be another component with the life insurance and the wife and the and the bar owner. Can we check out their trash before we go in? As usual. We can peek inside. See what's going on. I don't see them in here. Oh, hey. Hey, people. Hello? You guys just chilling out here? Come on, Cole. Leave them alone. <laughs> Sorry. I'm guessing we can't do anything here now, can we? Where are they? I kind of want to catch them off guard. I don't see them. Fine. Do you think she's sad at all? About her husband dying? They might have been arguing frequently, but they were married after all. Just don't know how to dance to bebop. One way to find Isn't out. That the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? 
Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? She doesn't seem that sad. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Is the bar owner still here? Just gonna have a look around, okay? Huh. Oh, not the bottles. Circumstantial. But they were playing poker here, so the husband regularly has people over. Oh, is that a note? No? Okay. Why is that locked? Huh. I'm not ruling out that the bar owner is still here. I'm not. Because <laughs> I feel like it's suspicious that bedroom is locked. Nope. We could be totally walking in on a cheating situation here. <laughs> Nothing around here. Nope. No. This isn't what we're looking for. Maybe some evidence of the insurance fraud. Oh, sewing machine. Is there really nothing here? No. Okay. All right. Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. Wow. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? <laughs> I think it's about time you left. I have someone here. I beg I... your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. Yeah. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? You were in her bedroom. Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. I don't want to interview her with that guy around. I want to interview them separately. Yeah, that guy needs to... needs to sit down somewhere else. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. Really now, people don't usually do that, even if they're drunk. He was drunk. But what about the knife? That's right, there's this whole portion about the knife here. And what about the argument? You expect me to believe that, Lorna. It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? <laughs> Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. 
He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. Wow. That was a proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we might be kind of, um, accusatory against the wife right now, but according to what she's saying, this Lester guy was not... He wasn't a nice guy either. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. Do you now? Where did it come from? <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> You're being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? Is that what you told Lester too, little man? You increased the premium on Lester's life insurance. GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights, craft games, pinochle, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run, detective. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. <laughs> But what about... What about... But what about the knife? We never got to anything about that. I'm not leaving just yet. Can I borrow your phone? Operator, give me dispatch. Someone's stalking me at the doorway. Putting you through now. Cole Phelps, badge 1247. Messages, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks for your help. Hmm. He's probably gonna tell us that, oh, it was you, Stefan. Probably gonna be like, wait, that wound was not caused by an ornament. It was a knife. You know, I don't really feel like talking to you right now. How, is it even proper for us to be interviewing somebody with someone standing over us? What do you think? Back downtown for the autopsy report. Let's see what the coroner makes of Lester Pattison. All right, fine. I'll drive. Maybe we can run into that street crime we had earlier, too. Kind of missed it when I walked out of the car. See, again, this is still not marked off, and it worries me. Why is it like that? We know we got all the clues already, though. Okay, operator. If you want to give me a street crime, now's the time to do it. Oh, I'm so sad that I hit someone earlier, though. I really didn't mean to, but they walked right in front of me. Okay? You can't blame me for that. It's not my fault. I didn't stab someone to kill them. I just... They walked into my knife. That's it. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not gonna dock my rating too much. So that actually tells me that it's okay to... Well, it's not okay. It's never okay. But it's more okay to be hitting street lamps and whatever, but not people. They're much less lenient if you actually hit a person here. So far, the rating at the end of the cases seemed like a fun little statistic, but it doesn't seem to actually affect anything, so... Whatever. I can kill whoever I want. <laughs> Okay, well, looks like we made it back, and there's no street crimes around. That's okay. Alright. Is that how ambulances looked back in the 1940s? A bar and orders a beer and a mop. What the hell? Uh... Corner's not here. Staff only. We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Oh my Two god. Puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. 
You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. Wait, how do you know Sabo is not the one who stabbed the guy? You want face one of them did it, but we don't know which one. Oh, how exciting! We have a murder here in a traffic case, and we're handling it. This is gonna be my promotion case, isn't it? Yeah, yeah! Hey, it's the heat. Again, I'll drive because I'm feeling excited today. Let's catch some baddies. We are... Where are we going back? Patterson? Yeah, I guess we are arresting them, right? Are we arresting them? Apprehend Lorna Patterson. Yes. We gotta go. Hopefully they're not running away by the time we get there. Hey, you like my U-turn there? That was perfect. <laughs> so it's one of them, and it seems like it was actually a knife murder, not a hit and run. But legally speaking, it feels like it's all a little bit gray because... Well, I guess it depends a little bit on whether Lester was actually dead before he got hit by the car too, because it's not like the car didn't hit him. He might not have intended to, the driver I mean, but he did hit him. So if the guy was stabbed, but he was alive, and then he walked out into the street, or was pushed by somebody, and then a car hit him, then... Who is really the most responsible here? It's not necessarily reckless driving if someone just gets pushed out onto the street so that you hit them. I think the guy was dead before the car hit him though, so maybe we don't have to think about that too much. That's for the judge to decide, not me. My job is to bring in all the baddies here, and I think we're close. Go right. Take the next right. Next right. Whoa, 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 people. People. Come on, pay attention to the, the lines on the road and all. <laughs> Police at work here. I wonder if we could have gone the coroner's report before we came back here. Or uh, came here for the first time. We've spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. <sighs> Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand nice jury. Nice of you to give me up, sweetheart. Oh, they're whispering in my ear, telling me how we had to get rid of them, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, had all shut the up! You bases covered, baby. I have nothing to do, do with it. Do you think I'm gonna fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him for God's sake! Oh God. It's too late, Sabo. Well, we got a, it's a double murder now. Oh, can we actually bring him in? I wanna, I wanna do the thing we did earlier with aiming at him, but he's not really staying still long enough for me to do that, right? Stop or I will shoot! Stop or I will shoot! I can't believe this is happening. I don't think normally the police would shoot a bullet into the sky like that, but okay. So, I give you a hit and run, you bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Can I get a promotion? Pay injury zero dollars. 
Yay, the up and up. Five stars. Valorous. Another visit to Ray's, and you would have seen what Leroy was prepared to do to avoid jail. Oh, so there was something there. I wonder what, because we did go into the bar, but we didn't see exactly what changed. We even talked to the bartender again, but he didn't say anything. Hmm, but I'll know in the future, though. If it's not striked out, it means something can still be done there. Hey, I got all the questions and the clues this time. It was a short one, though. 9 out of 9, 10 out of 10. I'll take it, I'll take it. $200 city damage? Whoa, $200 considering back in the day? That's like four pairs of pearl earrings and two and a half water heaters. <laughs> well, all three of those people, Lester, Lorna, Leroy, they were all truly a match made in heaven. All three of them were not particularly nice people.